Should you use a brush or a roller to paint a door? The answer is yes, sometimes, and it depends. Hang tight and I'll explain why. Yo, what's cracking, folks? Jeremy Vassar here with a video that hopefully will shed some light on how doors should be painted, at least in my humble opinion. I'm gonna go over the three most common ways to finish a door, the pros and cons of each, and the best use scenarios for each method. Recently, I've been making a lot of door-related content on the channel, and inevitably when I show a method of painting a door, someone in the comments will say that they can paint a door much faster than I'm doing it with a roller or a sprayer or something else. The goal for painting a door is to produce the most aesthetically pleasing finish that you are capable of uh, for that door. And depending on what type of door you're looking at, there are best use scenarios for different methods. And that's what we're gonna go over right now. One way to finish a door is with a sprayer. Uh, this is really more for professionals, uh, but I get asked about it quite a bit, so I thought it'd be appropriate to talk about. You're either gonna use an airless sprayer or an HVLP sprayer. Generally, the airless sprayers do a little bit better, but the HVLPs are coming up a little bit. And the pros of using a sprayer is it is the fastest way to lay down product. Recoat time is minimal. Uh, it also gives you the closest thing to a factory finish on a door that you're painting out in the field. The downside and the cons of using a sprayer is that it requires the most time for prep out. And when uh, people are talking about spraying, a lot of times they're not taking consideration how much time it takes to prep uh, the room or the space you're using to actually use the sprayer. Um, particularly when you're using an airless sprayer, you get a ton of particulate in the air, so you need to tape off everything that you don't want to get uh, paint on. A lot of times you got to tape off vents, you need to wear a respirator. Uh, it's a little bit less crazy with an HVLP, but there's less people using those. Another big con of using a sprayer is that that is the hardest finish to touch up. Uh, so if you sprayed a door and it all dried and then something happened to the door where you had to go back and touch it up, it's really hard to match that texture with a roller or any other method of uh, touching up that door. So that's a big downside, particularly for homeowner DIYer uh, that's looking to paint the interior doors of your house. All right, next up is the rolled finish, which you're going to be using something like this. Uh, this is a quarter inch um, Wooster roller. Uh, we, you can also use a 3 8 I like the quarter inch, and you might even use a smaller uh, roller cover like the 4 inch variety, depending on the type of door you're looking at. One of the advantages of using a roller is that you get a fairly close finish, particularly when you're using a quarter inch, something like that, to a factory finish. So it's kind of the closest thing you can do to get to a sprayed finish uh, with just using uh, more like hand tools like this. In general, particularly on flat panel doors, uh, this is quicker than brushing and uh, it's more appropriate in certain instances, which we will get to in a second. Another pro of using a roller is there's way less prep involved than spraying. Um, you know, pretty much the same as if you were gonna brush and roll, you're gonna use drop cloths and maybe take off the latch and the doorknob and things like that. Uh, but this is a fairly straightforward method to painting a door. And if you're interested to see how, how I do it on flat panel doors, I will link to that video up here. The cons of using a roller is that uh, you might end up with lap marks if you're not careful, and lap marks are where you can see the roller overlapping the other roller marks. Uh, so you want to have a uniform finish so it just looks like kind of that stipple pattern uh, all over the surface. Another con is that the, a rolled finish is the second hardest thing to touch up as far as these methods we're going over. Because uh, if you get a scuff in the middle of the door in the middle of the pattern that you put on with a roller, uh, then you're probably gonna have to re-roll that section or re-roll the whole door for all of that to blend together. Comparative to brushing, you need a little bit more infrastructure in place to do a roller and you're gonna use slightly more paint than you would if you were gonna brush it. Best use scenarios for uh, rollers. So when we use rollers, I'm using them on flat panel doors that have no grain pattern to them. Uh, so that's uh, pretty common, a lot of newer construction these days, and they're kind of more contemporary style doors. You still have to use a brush to get into some areas that you can't with a roller, um, but that is, uh, that's when we use them quite a bit. The other time to use or consider using a roller is if the door has been previously rolled. Regardless of what the door looks like, if it's been previously rolled, then you might be locked into just kind of doing the best you can with the uh, pattern that's already there. Number three is hand brushed with something like this. This is a two and a half inch Corona Vegas. It's my current favorite trim brush and what I use to paint the majority of the doors that I paint. Let's talk about the pros of hand brushing a door. Number one, it's the lowest barrier to entry method of painting a door. You need very few things to do it. You just need a brush, a paint pot, and some paint, and you're pretty much ready to go. Prep out's very minimal. Uh, you just use a drop cloth, and your prep's kind of the same if you were gonna roll the door. It's also the easiest way to touch up a door. 
uh, is if it's brushed because you can just pick up that brush pattern that you did. If it got scuffed in the middle, you just carry through that brush stroke and it generally will blend in if you have good stop points. Another pro is that a uh, hand brushed can be a, if done correctly, is a really nice looking classic finish. Uh, it's actually a finish that a lot of my clients prefer, particularly on certain types of doors like six panel doors and front doors and things like that. Uh, it can be a method that people actually like over some of the other uh, ways of doing it. And the cons for brushing is it tends to be the slowest method of applying the product. Uh, it's also the most labor intensive, so you're doing a lot of, uh, it's just a lot of brush work. And if uh, that's something you're not used to, it can get tiring and, you know, fatigue the hands and things like that. And uh, I found too, for whatever reason, sometimes hand brushing can be somewhat intimidating for folks. So, um, but to me, it's still, it's, it's worth pursuing. So I'm gonna get to that right now. Uh, best use scenarios for hand brushed finishes as I like anytime you have a six panel door that has a grain pattern to it I think it looks way better to have it hand brushed and you're following those patterns I've done two videos recently about producing that type of finish on those doors and I will link them up here uh, also louvered doors which have the slats in them. That's one of the use case scenarios where like a sprayer is definitely the easiest, but if you're not gonna spray, which most people aren't, hand brushing is the move. It's super hard to get in there with a roller. If the door's already been brushed, it's a good idea to just keep with that pattern and brush it and try and clean that up as best you can. And then the other kind of most common use scenario I see is front doors. Most folks like the front doors they have. A lot of times they've already been brushed and it's just the more classic look to have it hand brushed, at least in my experience, and I've painted a lot of front doors. So that's gonna do it for me. Until next time, y'all take it easy, work smart, and have a good one. Peace.